Evangelical Ministry. Global Evangelical Church presents to you our service. Please enjoy. Our senior pastor, Reverend John Baker Katende, and his wife, Pastor Robina Katende, welcome you to the Global Evangelical Family. We are back home. Um, pastor, uh, senior pastor, Yendeka, co pastors, the elders, and uh, other ministers, may God bless you for the tremendous work we are doing in this place. You are not serving God in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, this is my last Sunday here, this winter. Yeah, so I'll come back. <laughs> Amen. So uh, I'll be traveling back to Uganda tomorrow. My flight is at uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, seven thirty in the evening. Amen. Thank you so much for receiving me. You people are receptive. You have big hearts. Back at home, at our church, we call it a big heart. You see, big hearts do big things. So, thank you so much. I have enjoyed my stay here. I've enjoyed you. I've enjoyed the youth. Uh, do you have youth in the house? Youth. Where are my buddies? So, have, <laughs> amen. Uh, we have had enough time. I've had fun. We've uh, had competitions, I told you the other day. And uh, I won many of them. <laughs> amen. Um, uh, the married, I happened to uh, join them uh, when they had their retreat. So, uh, and the rest of you, we have interacted. I've made friends. You guys are my friends. So, thank you so, so much. And uh, I have long stories to tell my family. They will not sleep. I'll tell them, tell them stories. Uh, I thank Pastor and Mama for receiving me. Uh, pastor picked me at the airport. It was a long process. He knows, and uh, he picked me, and uh, he has fed me well. I have eaten food. I'm not complaining. Mama, she has cooked. So I've eaten food. So thank you so much. May God bless you so, so much. Uh, when I was living in Uganda, Mama Jolie Buenji said, you are going to America. There is food. More so there is chicken. He said, okay. He sent me to eat. He's not sending me to dig. I'll eat it. I've eaten chicken. I've eaten food. Foods I didn't know, I've eaten them. And so, the scripture has come to pass. What eyes have never seen. Yes. So, uh, uh, thank you so much, Pastor. I also want to thank God, uh, I want to thank my, my brother, Brother Ronald. Is he, Brother Ronald, I can't see you. Where are you? Ronald Chironde, he is waving to you. Uh, I've stayed with him all this time. And uh, many times I've been coming late because uh, I've been moving around and people taking me here and there. But uh, I've never found the door closed. He, locked me, uh, he has never locked me outside. Uh, yes, he's a good, he's a cool guy. Thank you so much, and he's great to be for information. So support him. I also support him. Uh, I've eaten his grocery, and he has been encouraging me to eat. Yeah, so he has been telling me, "You eat." I said, "Okay, I will eat." I wake up in the morning because the only job I had here was to eat. Wake up in the morning, eat. Rest for 30 minutes, eat. Uh, I've eaten his grocery, and he has never complained. He said he has been encouraging me. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Ronald. And then, uh, Mama, Mama, Mama Angel. Mama Angel, are you here? Mama Angel. Mama Angel. Many times I've gone to her house, and uh, many youth. Ah, she's a celebrity here. Mama Angel. Everyone is in her house. So, 
We we'll always go there with pasta and uh, the rest. Many youth are always there. And she cooks food. I told you the other day, Christmas Day, we, she prepared a food, a banquet. We ate until 3 a.m. We ate food. Even on uh, fast, fast, yeah. So she had a mini party. She organized and we ate food. Again, after 3 a.m. I told them, you guys, let me go. But we ate food. Mama Angel, thank you so much. You uh, tell her. I thank her in absentia. So thank you so, so, so much. I uh, uh, also want to thank the people I went with to, to what is it called? Toa, 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 mi, toa Nipi, yeah, for the prayer retreat. We had good time. We had from God. Amen. And uh, God is going to do great things. I'm telling you, as pastor has said, God is going to do great things. And uh, while we were there, I, I, was not, I was not supposed to go. As in, when I was leaving Uganda, I said, okay, they have told me there's enough, there's food in the U.S. So, he said, okay, let me go and eat the good of land, I told them. So, along the way, uh, I was arrested. I mean, God arrested me, no one arrested me. God, just to join the group. So, we went and uh, we had such nice time. So, uh, I think on the last day, uh, they were moved to sow a seed in me. So, uh, I thank you so much. I, I, I never expected it. As in. So, thank you so much. They, have, they, they, they sowed a seed in me. And uh, my prayer is um, that God will reward you and uh, God will enlarge you. I pray that you, you, will, you will harvest according to the principle of the harvest. The principle of the harvest is one, you sow what you reap. So they, they sold money, and, uh, and they, they will reap money. Number two, you will reap more than we sow. That's the principle of the harvest. We reap more. You sow and seed of maize, you expect to get uh, two cobs each with a hundred seeds. So they, they are going to reap more. And uh, also, we uh, also not forgetting that we reap later than we sow. So you might not reap today, when you, but uh, later, later could be two week, two days, two weeks. But rest assured, you reap. So thank you so much. I pray that uh, God will give it back to you in a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over in Jesus' name. Uh, the ground is still fertile, so so you, so you have seeds there. You can. The ground is fertile. In Jesus' name. <laughs> uh, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, we thank God for this time. And uh, as Pastor said. He went before us. He went about three weeks before, okay? And uh, he heard from God that uh, this is the season, the time to launch in the deep, launch deeper. Amen? So we are still launching deeper. Hallelujah. And uh, uh, we are going to see God. Amen. So I uh, will not deviate from the scripture. Mm, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5 and uh, verses 1. We are still launching in the deep. Uh-huh. So it reads, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret, And so, two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then it got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and they asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and told the multitudes from the boat. 
uh, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep. Say it with me. Launch out into the deep and let down your needs for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will lay down the net. And when they had done this, they, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both the boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and Jesus told Simon to launch. The Bible said uh, uh, after he had taught, after teaching, he told Simon to launch in the deep. Amen. And Simon obeyed God's word. Simon obeyed Jesus' word. Amen. If he had not obeyed, if he didn't obey, because he had excuses, he said, Master, we toiled the whole night and caught nothing. He had excuses. He was tired. I, 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 I thank Peter because Simon, because as much as he was tired, because he toiled the whole day, he didn't sleep, but he stayed. He sat in Jesus' boat and listened to Jesus' teaching. Amen? Uh, many times we, we get tired and uh, you feel you like to go to church. The body is weak and uh, uh, you don't go. Eh? Practice, you don't. But Simon, Simon was tired, but he said, I will stay. And he stayed. Jesus taught, after teaching, Jesus told him to launch in the deep. That is obedience. Amen? So today, we are going to look at obedience. Obedience. As we are launching deeper, as we are following Jesus, as we are expecting great things in the new year, 2019, obedience is key. Hallelujah. And Peter obeyed. He said, Nevertheless, at your word, I will launch in the deep. Hallelujah. So, obedience. Hallelujah. So, we are going to look at uh, obedience. Obedience guarantees success. And Peter obeyed, and he was successful. He looked for fish the whole night. He didn't catch a fish. But because he obeyed, what he was looking for he had it in plenty. Hallelujah. So if uh, uh, we are to see God in 2019, see God uh, do great things, obedience is very important. Hallelujah. In Isaiah it says, if you shall obey and listen, you will eat the good of... Praise the name of the Lord. So obedience guarantees success. Hallelujah. We obey to what? We obey to rules. We obey to laws. We obey to regulations. <laughs> Amen? Um, countries have laws. The United States has laws. Its constitution was drafted here about 300 or so years ago. But you still obey them. In the U.S., you have to drive on the right. Hmm? Uh, you disobey, you breach that law, you face the law, the consequences of the law. Uh, I remember yes, yesterday, uh, we were driving with uh, my brother, Nenda uh, Bagamba, <laughs> my brother, David Dibuayo, we are that side of East, East, East Boston. And so we are chatting and laughing and excited and and uh, accidentally, but by mistake, we got into a uh, single, single lane, one way. Yeah. 
No sooner had we reached, just we had just moved a few meters into the, 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 the single lane, one way. The police guys were just coming in front of us. So we turned, we had not seen them. Uh, so as we were trying to turn, they came, stopped, and they asked him, Where is your registration license? Where is your driver's license? And he showed them. We thank God because uh, we escaped the, the ticket. He, he just said, he just said, be careful, be careful, man, be careful. And, but because we had broken a, a, a law, amen. Hallelujah. I'm a teacher. We have rules, school rules. We have class rules. Um. The, 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 the rules are well outlined. They, they are on the notes board inside the classroom. So, students know what to do. You know? About 10, 10 commandments. We have 10 rules, I know, I remember. 10 of them. No snacking in class, no, no long hair, no uh, uh, distracting the class. So, if a student breaks one of the rules. There are some rules that are equal to a pink, we have pink slips, we have pink slips, we have, we, I teach in international students so we don't cane, uh, so we don't spank kids. Now, if a, a kid breaks one of the class rules, you ask the, the kid to repeat the, the rule that he or she has broken. Uh -huh, which rule? There are 10 of them. Which one have we broken? Okay, I destroyed the, the class. Okay? So that is equal to a pink slip. You accumulate three pink slips. That is a suspension. Two weeks. You come back after two weeks. You, that, that's put on your record, on your file. You, you, you break another one, the course of the term. Three, you accumulate three. You are given an, a, 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 another sus. Now, the next suspension is equal to an expulsion. So we ex, ex, expel you. So th there are rules, there are guidelines. Students know that this is what we have to do. The teacher is not in class. This is what we have to do. No, no, no jumping on tables. No, they know. But some, some kids are, are, are so provocative. You are seated under a tree having your um, tea, it's break time, a kid comes, um, excuse me teacher, so you pause, thinking that maybe this, this kid has a math, a math question, uh, excuse me teacher, uh, uh, so, uh, so why, why should, should, should we not snack in class? The rule is, is already serious, they know it. So, why, why shouldn't we snack in class? Some of those questions, of course, we don't answer then. Go. You know what? It's a rule. So, why? They, they want to ask. Rules are rules. Amen? So, God has given us rules. God has given us laws. And the, God is law. is his word. Amen? So, we, 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 we don't ask questions. We, we, we have to obey. Amen? Some of God's, God's laws are known to be questioned. God tells you, do not steal. Do not commit a dad. He, he doesn't explain them that you have to obey. Amen. Because you engage in a discussion in, in, you reason with him, God, maybe along the way, he, 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 he may uh, 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 reduce the standard. Okay? So, the reason we do, we do we, God does not want us to reason. The Bible says in Isaiah, come and reason together. But reasoning with God is not reasoning concerning the laws of God, his word. Eh? Amen. Why? He doesn't want to lower his standards. I don't engage in a discussion with a kid because kids have reasons. And uh, a kid can out reason you, you have nothing to tell them. And they give you examples. My friend in the other school, does they allow them to do this? And 
this and the other school. This, we, we are not the other school. Eh? So you engage in a discussion, you find that you find yourself, <laughs> you are defeated and uh, you, the kids out reasons, you, know, you have nothing to do. So the reason we don't out, out reason, the reason we don't engage in discussions, they are laws, obey them, period. Amen. So God has given us his laws, and his law is his word that we have to obey. Amen. And as we launch deeper in obedience to his word, we are going to see success. Obedience guarantees success. Hallelujah. Amen. The universe, God created this universe with laws. You go against the laws of the universe, you, 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 you face the consequences of... If you want to go against the law of gravity, try just climb up here and jump. If you want to test it, some of us want to test God's laws. <laughs> Amen. Uh, when we were in Amshir uh, that morning, when we were coming back, it is snow. Yeah? There was snow. and uh, So I said, eh, I know I've never seen this, you know. Remember I told you, uh, the day before Christmas, there was some little snow. So I was asking Pastor, eh, what are these small flying insects in, the, in space? I have never seen. So, so there was snow and uh, the whole place was slippery. So I said, hey, they say snow is slippery. Let me try. Eh. I didn't fall because God helped me. I took one leg. I shoo, but God helped me. I didn't fall down. <laughs> Amen. I was, I was going against the law of friction. Now there's no friction there. There's less friction. So you can just go over. It's, you know, I was trying to test the law of friction. <laughs> Amen? So that, well, that's what happens to us. We try to test God's laws. Face consequences. Amen? God's laws are to be obeyed. God's word is to be obeyed. Praise the name of the Lord. Seeds have laws. <laughs> Amen? The law of the seed is you have to plant it, put it in the soil, give it water, you will see the, 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 the seed growing into a tree. Amen? Put it here, it will spend six years here, it will not, it will not grow. Why? You have violated the law of the seed. It has to be in, in soil, it has to be pro provided with water. Amen. Hallelujah. So let's be careful as we launch deeper, as we uh, follow God's word, to be in line with God's word, so that we don't violate the law of God's word. Amen? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. So, uh, and Peter launched deeper because he obeyed the word of Jesus. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, Whatever you need for 2019, for 2020, Pastor Noah says 2050, 2080. Whatever you need is in God's word. Period. Amen. We can pray. We can have overnights. We can have conferences. We can have prayer retreats. But as long as we are not obeying the law, God's word, we are wasting time. Amen. So we have to be, to, 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 to study. God tells Joshua. And this book of the law shall not depart from, but you shall meditate on it day and night. When we meditate on God's word, when we speak God's word, we see success. When you obey, God tells Joshua, take this law, take my word, uh, uh, memorize it, read it, submit to it, you will see success. And Joshua does it, he saw success. Amen. Whatever we need is in God's word. This reminds me of uh, one student. This student was going back to school, beginning of term. So the mother shopped for him everything he needed for school. But uh, he was, she also bought him a Bible, new Bible with a zip. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, she didn't give him money, pocket money. Yeah? What is it called? Pocket money, money for upkeep in cash. Okay. okay. So she put the money in the Bible and zipped the Bible. 
So she tells the boy, you are going to school, but I'm, I, I don't have money right now. But I'll, I'll come to school in a few days, and I'll bring you the money. But the money was in the Bible. She tells the boy, but uh, if you find any problem, if you, um, if, if you are perplex, you, for any problem, just read. Just open that Bible. I'm giving you this Bible. Open it and uh, ask God. He will meet every single need of yours. The man was in the Bible. The boy goes to school. Three days, he calls. Hey, mom, you said you are coming in two days. Where are you? And I said, oh, I was, I'm busy, but I, I'm coming. But I told you, if you get any problem, just open that Bible. Read that Bible. Uh-huh. After a week, he calls, mom, where are you? Why did you lie to me? You said you were coming in, two, in a few days. Now it's a week. Do you know how much I'm suffering at school? I have no pocket money. I have no money for upkeep. Mom, I'm sorry. It's too busy. Uh, but I told you, whatever you want, if you find any problem, any need, just open that Bible. Ask, pray to God. God will answer you. God will meet your need. Mom, I'm reading your Bible. Let me tell you. I've even covered the first five books of the Bible. The boy never even opened the Bible. After two weeks, Mom, I didn't know you hate me. Where are you? So, like that, until the end of the term, the mother never showed up at school. The boy comes back, brings his stuff, throws everything there, saying, I never knew that you hate me. How could you lie to me? Do you know how much I suffered at, uh, at school? Do you know how much uh, I was, uh, do you know that I was uh, begging my, 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 my classmates, everything, sugar and everything that I needed, I was begging. I never knew you hate me. You might not be even be my mother. Maybe you lied to me, you are not my mother. So the boy was mad. And the mother apologized, sorry, I failed to come. But I told you, open. I gave you a new Bible. I told you to open it and pray to God. Because whatever you need is in that Bible. But he said, I, oh, I read your Bible. I, I even finished your Bible. I read all oh, the books of the Bible. You hate me. Mother tells the boy, okay, give me the Bible. The boy gives the Bible to the mother. The mother opens it in front of the boy. And look, the money was in the Bible. <laughs> Amen. So whatever we need is concealed in God's word. You need healing? It's here. Amen. You need prosperity? It's here. You need peace? Whatever you need for life and for eternity is in God's word. It's concealed in God's word. So we all need to obey. Like Simon obeyed. And uh, he saw results. Hallelujah. Sometimes God's word sounds foolish. True? God tells Abraham, leave your father's house, leave your kindred, go to a land that I will show you. God never gave Abraham a GPS. God never told him, go this direction. God told him, just go. I will show you. If it were you, would you accept that statement from God? <laughs> Amen. It's sad. Where should I go? But Abraham obeyed. He moved. Amen. And God looked at his obedience and he gave him a whole nation. Now we have Israel just because of Abraham. That it sounded foolish. True. Look at Jehoshaphat. A very huge army attacks him. God tells him after he prayed, stand still. You will see the salvation of the, of the Lord. Tomorrow morning, assemble uh, the Levites and, uh, and um, priests. Let, let them go ahead of the army. They went ahead, blowing trumpets, singing. It sounds 
The other people have weapons. They have, they are armed. They, how, can, how can seeing as musicians go to attack a well-armed army? Doesn't make sense. But when he obeyed, Jehoshaphat didn't even fight. God defeated his enemies. He obeyed. Amen. Look at Gideon. The Midianites uh, oppress Israel. And God tells Gideon, go. And he tells him to get a jar, to get a torch, to get a trumpet, to attack a, 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 a well-armed army. Does it make sense? But when he obeyed, Israel was delivered from the hand of the Midianites. Amen. Ah, look at Jesus. A, a, a blind man comes to him, seeking for healing. Jesus mixes dust, smears it on his eyes, tells him to go and wash his eyes. Does it make sense? You have the power to heal me. I expected to place your, your hands on me, on my eyes, and receive my sight. You tell me, you say, mix dust, and they smear dust on my eyes. Tell me to go and wash. Does it make sense? But when the man obeyed, he received his sight. <laughs> Naaman, Pastor Robert was telling us about Naaman. Naaman goes to, jo to, to Elisha. He had the process. Elisha tells his servant to tell Naaman to go and dip himself seven times in River Jordan. And he had questions, of course. But when he obeyed on the seventh time, the man came out with no repros. Obedience to God's word guarantees success. I will go on. Amen. So let's purpose this year, 2019. I know it's a battle. It's not easy to obey God's word. God, some of the diseases we have are caused by maybe anger. You have sat with someone, you keep it on your heart. For long, you develop sicknesses. God tells you to forgive, just forgive. And you get rid of that disease. But you say, ah, let them come. I will not forgive them. They will have first come to me, but even when they come, you know what they did to me. You fail to forgive. You remain with that disease. Amen. So some of the things God tells us are simple things. They seem hard on our side, but we are, God cannot tell us something, God cannot tell you a word that you are not able to do. Hallelujah. 2019. Let 2019 be a different year from the rest of the past years. 2019. Let's do what? Let's see what God wants. Does God want me to forgive. Does some of the battles we go through, as Pastor was saying in a prayer retreat, are battles from within us, not from without. Jesus said it. The, the great, our greatest enemy is not coming from without. It's coming from within. Jesus said, what defies man is from within, from the heart. Amen. So we can ask God to give us the strength and the grace to do what he wants us to do so we can be successful in whatever we do. So we can uh, see uh, answered prayers. Amen. Obedience. Obedience. Amen. Have another example of Saul. In First Samuel chapter fifteen, God tells Saul to go and destroy the Amalekites. And so Saul goes out to destroy the Amalekites. He reached there. He saw good things. His eyes tempted him to see things. Amen. You see, let me say this. The temptations we go through 
the battles we are fighting, uh, struggles we are going through, uh, anything, they, at least it falls in one of these one, the last of the flesh. Hmm? The last of the eyes and the pride of life. Whatever you are going through, it's one of those. Last of the flesh, the last of the eyes, and the pride of life. So Saul was tempted. So good things, nice looking cattle, good looking sheep. So he said, we can take these ones. These ones are very good. We can't destroy, we can't kill such good things. And so he collected them with his army and he took them to Israel. He went ahead to uh, to, to, to capture the king of, 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 of the Americas, Agag. He took him to Israel. But remember God told him, through prophet Samuel, go and destroy everything. Do not spare a thing. But he said, the good things I will take. Them. And he took them in the name of sacrificing to God. Remember when Samuel came to him, said, okay, We'll come back from the battle. Well done. So have you done according to what God told you? You said yes. What, what of the, 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 how the, the bleating of the sheep? And he said, those ones, my soldiers collected them so we can give a sacrifice to your God. Saul said to someone, to your God. Not even to his God. To your God. Someone tells him, because you have disobeyed, God has taken out the kingdom of Israel from your hand. Samuel, um, yeah, Samuel walks away. Saul grabs him and uh, his garment was torn. Samuel said, as my garment is being torn, so God has torn your kingdom and is taking away from you. Yes. Saul so said to Samuel, okay, respect me eh? before these people and before my officials. You see pride, eh? The last of the eye, collecting nice looking animals, good things. Now pride of life, okay. I know, I've done bad. It's okay. But respect me eh? before pride of life. But God had taken away the kingdom from Saul. Just because of disobedience. Amen. Just because of disobedience. Just because of, of lack of a repentant heart. Am I just disobeyed? Just disobeying. Just bring animals and, and agag to, to Israel. Look at David. David killed. David committed adultery. Which of the two, Saul and David, committed a greater crime before God? The other man just didn't destroy everything. This one killed. Number two committed adultery. Can you forgive that person? But because he repented, because he fell down and poured out his heart and repented before God, God forgives him. And in the end, see what God says that David has a heart that is after him. Yeah, yeah. Man, you killed. Man, you, yeah. The other man just disobeyed. Just. But because he repented. So let 2019 be a year of repentance. Amen. Let's remember, people have not forgiven. Let's, let's remember, you know, you know them. You know the people have not forgiven. You know, uh, uh, people you hate, you know what you, you know what is in your heart. Late 2019, be a year of repentance. Amen. And after we've repented, let's obey what God tells us. We are going to seek God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. As I conclude, when we obey, when we obey God, when we obey God's law, when we obey God's word, God will always reward us. Amen. God will always reward us. 
God rewards obedience. Number one, when we obey, just uh, like Simon obeyed, when we obey, we receive God's blessings and uh, multiplication. When Simon obeyed, he received God's blessing, he got fish, and the Bible says he enclosed a multitude of fishes. Simon's nets. Simon was an experienced fisherman, seasoned fisherman. He had all different types of nets that catch different types of fish. But at Jesus' word, when he threw his nets in the deep, he enclosed a multitude of fishes. Pastor said fishes means we don't have fishes in English. If a teacher tell a student, uh huh. The, op the opposite of the following words. Number one, woman, women, fish, fishes. You cross, is it correct? Fishes? It's one. But fishes, he said, he caught different types, different kinds of fish at Jesus' word. Amen. And he got so many of them. He signaled his friends to come and help him. When we obey God, receive his blessing. God multiplies us. Do you want God to multiply 2019? To multiply your money, to multiply your blessing? To Just obey. At his word, he will bless you. As long as you obey his word, God is going to bless us. He's going to multiply us. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says in Isaiah 48, 17, God teaches us to profit. When we obey, God teaches to profit. You know what profit means? To profit. Amen. And whatever you place your hands on, God multiplies. God blesses it. Just because you have obeyed. Obedience brings blessings and multiplication in the name of Jesus. Simon obeyed. He got many a multitude of fishes, blessings, multiplication. Amen. When Abraham obeyed, God blessed him. I made him a nation. Then I will give you many, many children as the sand of the sea, the stars of the sky. Blessing, multiplication, just because he obeyed. It's a challenge to us, Uganda, to obey. It's not easy, but we... We can make it. We, we can manage it. Hallelujah. Amen. So, obedience brings blessings. When we surrender to God and we give him our lives and we walk according to this word. When Simon surrendered to God, to Jesus, launched in the deep, he was blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh -huh. Then, uh -huh. bless, uh, I mean, obedience also leads or uh, causes our prayers to be answered. We don't need to pray a lot. Yeah. Praying is good. Don't miss what Praying is good. But praying accompanied with obedience produces results. So, obedience causes our prayers to be answered. We, our prayers, we pray to God, and God answers us. Amen. You know that God has, just, yeah, God has told us, the Bible, Jesus said, pray, pray always. Peter and the other, uh, the other uh, the, uh, apostles, it's pray. People say pray. Be vigilant, be watchful, and pray. That we find it hard to pray. It's a command. Do you know that not praying is a sin? Not praying is a sin because it's a command. If you aren't praying, just as the Bible commands us to pray, we are sinning. God instructs us to pray. If we don't pray, we are sinning. It's a sin. I learned this recently. 
Satan, I, I used to think Satan and God are far distant. They are far apart. God is high in the heavens. Jesus is far in the deep, darkest ends of... I thought it's like that. I never, and little did I know, that Satan presents himself every day before God. But in at times, we do not present ourselves to God through prayer. Because as we are praying, we are presenting ourselves to God. Eh? We are punching in. It's punching in, eh? When we pray. The Bible says in Job, in the book of Job, when the, the sons of God were going to present themselves to God, Satan came with them. You've read that. Satan came with sons of God coming to present themselves before God. And Satan coming with them. And look, God engages Satan in the conversation. He, I think, when Satan was cast from heaven, he has never seen God. God has never seen him. God engages him in the conversation. Hey, where are you coming from? Hey, from this, from moving from this to that side. You know what he said. Okay, have you seen my servant, my faithful servant, Job? And I'm thinking, Job's suffering was caused by God. Because Satan had not started it. God started the conversation. Have you seen? <laughs> but he went to present himself with the sons of God. When Saul sinned, the Bible says, and the spirit of God departed from him. And an evil spirit came and, and uh, tormented him. The Bible says, and an evil spirit from the Lord. Does God have evil spirits? God has angels. Holy angels. The Bible says, an, an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. When you read 2 Chronicles chapter 18, when Ahab was going out uh, to, 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 to attack a town called Ramoth Gilead, yeah, that's the name, he called his prophets, he had the false prophets, you know, pagan prophets, prophets of Baal. He called them to prophesy on him. Will I succeed in this campaign? He said, yeah, you go. God is giving you victory. Ahab <coughs> said, okay, you professor. Jehoshaphat asked him, okay, everyone has prophesied. We are going to overcome. But uh, don't, don't you have another prophet out there whom we can listen from? Ahab said, there's one prophet called Micaiah, but he has never prophesied good. He has never Yehoshua said, I don't say like that. Just call him. They called Micaiah. Micaiah, when Micaiah came, he said to Ahab, I had, I saw God seated on his throne and a spirit, an evil spirit went to God. God asked the evil spirit, what are you going to do to entice Ahab to go for this battle? And the evil spirit told God, I'll be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets. The evil spirit from God coming as a lying spirit into the mouth of these prophets. God has evil spirits. But the, the evil spirit, Satan presents himself to God. I'm going to explain. Then, uh, Revelation chapter 22, verse, verses 10. The Bible says, the, part B. For the accuser of our brothers, who accuses them, they, they accuse Satan. Who accuses them day and night before our God. Satan accuses you every day before God. You lie, he runs to God very fast. Have you seen your saint? You call him a saint, he has lied. You hate someone, Satan runs very quickly to God. Satan accuses us every day before God. Revelation 22, 10. 12, 10? I think 12, 10. He accuses us. Satan presents himself every day 
Now, when the Spirit of God departs from someone, there's no virtue. Satan has to take over. Evil spirits have to take over. Now, because they present themselves to God, God allows them. They ask God. Evil spirits are ever pestering God. For, they are asking for you. Jesus said in, uh, in Luke 22, after the, 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 the last supper, he told Simon, Peter, Satan desires to have you, but I prayed for you that you may. Satan, where, where, where did Satan go to demand for, P, for, for Peter, Simon Peter, before God? Satan demands for you every day before God. He accuses you. Whatever I do, he accuses you. But we have the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our advocate. You've gone to court. They accuse you. You have a lawyer as your advocate. We have the Holy Spirit that advocates for us before God. Amen. My point is, Satan presents himself before God every day. But we, the saints of God, spend a, a day, whole day, without praying, without presenting, without punching in, present, without, we are busy. Not only you, even back in Uganda, we are busy. I, I, I told you, studying these people, I used to go to church. I had a busy day. Said I will spend the night in church. No one is in church, but I just come over, say I will pray this throughout this night. When I reach church, I look at my watch, say, okay, it's 10 p.m. Now I'm going to sleep until 2 a.m. Then I wake up and pray. I sleep on a mat, don't even cover myself. I sleep full until 6.30. Guess who wakes me up? The kids, the students, the primary school at church. When they come in the morning, they scream. So I just wake up. Eh, look at the time, 6.30. I came to pray, to present myself before God. Now see, it happens to us. We get tired. We, we don't pray. You, 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 you end the day without praying. Yet we have to present ourselves in the morning before God, in the afternoon, in the evening. Daniel prayed three times. So the least number of times you can pray a day, at least three, just like Daniel. You can pray always. Even as you are working, be praying. Eh? Be praying. As you are driving, pray. Present yourself to God because there's an accuser who is accusing you before God day and night. Amen. So, obedience cause our prayer, prayers to be, to be, to be answered. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Second last, obedience promotes worship. Obedience to God's law, obedience to his word, promotes worship. Amen? Worship, genuine worship comes from obe obedience to God's word. When um, uh, uh, Saul say to Samuel, I brought all this so as to sacrifice to you. That was not genuine worship. It was worship out of falsehood. Because God told him to destroy. But he said, to sacrifice to your God. He brought all that stuff to sacrifice. That is not genuine worship. It's worship out of disobedience. But genuine worship comes from obeying God's word. Amen. Genuine worship. And when Abraham obeyed, he sacrificed. Amen. S sacrifice of genuine sacrifices, real obedience comes from God's word. It promotes worship. Amen. And it, uh, uh, the Bible says, what is more pleasing to God? Is it sacrifices or it's obedience? He was telling you so. What is more important? Is it sacrifices? So, when we sacrifice to God, give us sacrifices out of disobedience. 
he does not count your sacrifices. When Cain gave a sacrifice out of disobedience, God was not pleased with his sacrifice because it was out of disobedience. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When we obey God's word, obedience guarantees success. When you obey, we are, we, 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 are uh, we are assured of protection. God protects an obedient person. Psalm 91 verse 3 says, and he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler. God will protect you as long as you obey him. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, we shall read that verse. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verses 5. Uh huh. It says, because, um, 8 5. Yeah. He who keeps his command will experience nothing harmful. I wanted that part. We experience nothing harmful. It doesn't mean that when we obey God's word, um, bad things or bad occurrences will not happen to us. They do. They do happen. They do come. Problems come. Afflictions come. Sickness come. They do come. But we are sure that our God will take us through all that. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8, he makes all things work together for our good. And as much as we are going through sickness, death, uh, problems in marriages, he will make, in the end, he will make all things work together for, he allows all that to happen to us because he wants to show himself as a powerful God. He is building a testimony for us. Obedience to God's word guarantees protection. Amen. We are protected from the snares of Satan. We are protected from accidents. We are protected. We are under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. In my high school, in my secondary school, I was studying with the kids that were very stubborn. Bringing alcohol in school, bringing uh, uh, marijuana in school. But because I knew God, I was not tempted. God protected me from all that. I had a close friend. He brought a small, a little bottle of, of, of water. And he, I almost took a sip. I almost. So I got hold of the bottle. The bottle reached here. God reminded me, the hospital convicted me there and then. You are a child of God. This is a sin. I gave him the bottle. I said, no, I will not take. I said, well, what everyone is taking? I was wrong. Hey, you are born again. <laughs> After a few years, I met him in downtown Kampala along uh, Mokwana Kid, lying on a veranda. He was drunk, totally drunk. He failed to walk. He was lying down. I had not seen him. He called me. I looked at him. He had no shoes. I had a border border for him to take him home. Before long, I was told he was admitted in Murago Hospital. A few days he died. We buried him. But God protected me from all that. How would I be here? I would be a drunk also. God protected me. <laughs> Amen. Just, I trusted God. He protected me. Another one, I met him in, a, um, in, a, in, a, in Uzira. He had defiled a five-old girl. He was sentenced to 17 years in prison. So I found him in prison, said, I wish I knew. I wish I made the decision you made. I'm here. I'm going to be here for 17 years. 
he had served six, was left within, with, the, with 11. God protected me from all that. It started small in school. <laughs> just take a, just one sip. The man became a drunk. Had I started small, I would be far. Things start small, <laughs> they grow big. But God protects us. We thank God, He protects us from all that. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And lastly, when we obey God's word, God blesses us with long life. Long life. Amen. Deuteronomy 32 46. Deuteronomy 32 46. Am I still on time? Deuteronomy 32. 46. Uh-huh. And he said to them, set your hearts on all the words which I testify among you today. This is Joshua telling the children of Israel. Which you shall command your children to be careful to observe all the words of this law. 47. For it is not a futile thing for you, because it is your life. And by this word, you shall prolong your days in the land which you cross over, uh, the Jordan possess. Joshua urges the children of Israel to teach the law, to teach the word of God to their children and their children's children. And he said, with this, you prolong your days in the land. That God is giving you to possess. When we obey, God gives us long. Still Psalm 91, the, the, the last verse says, and God will satisfy you with good life. Psalm 91, God will satisfy us with good life as long as we obey. Good life means what God calls good. That's how I was telling it to me. What God calls good, it is good indeed. Good life is life of prosperity, life of peace, life of wealth, life, good life. What God, God, God calls good, it is really good. God will satisfy us with good life when we obey. 2019, let it be a year of obedience to God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Did I say last? Now the very last. Now the very last. Amen. When we obey God's word, God's word gives us boldness and confidence. You know that you are not strong on your own. You that you are too weak. You are too weak. But it's the word of God that gives you strength. And the joy of the Lord is our. When we obey, God is pleased. He strengthens us. Strengthens our bodies. Strengthens our spiritual lives. He strengthens us. The joy of the Lord. God gives us boldness and confidence when we obey his word. Look at these four boys, Daniel, Shadrach, Mishach, and Abednego. They were because they decided they purpose in their heart to obey God, they said, we shall not bow at this golden image of Nebuchadnezzar. You are seeing the fire. But they said, we shall not need purpose to obey God, not to obey the king. Amen. Remember, those were not their names. Shadrach, Mishash, Abnego, they were not their names. They had Hebrew names. Those were names given to them by Nebuchadnezzar in the Babylonian captivity. They were not their names. Their names, their Hebrew names were. Shadrach was Hananiah. God is gracious. Jehovah is gracious. That was his name. Mishach, his Hebrew name was Mishael. 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 Who is like God? That's the interpretation. The meaning. Who is like God? That was his name. Then Nebuchadnezzar gives him Mishach. Shadrach. Those were names of his gods. Um... Abnego. Nego was a, a god. 
in, in Babylon. He gives him Abnego. That was not his name. His Hebrew name was Azaria. Azaria. God, Jehovah, has helped. When they stood in obedience to God, when they say we shall not bow at this golden image, their true names, their God-given names showed up in the fire. Who is like God? Really, who is like God? Who can save in the fire? They came out not, not even one of their hair. They were not even, not, not even smelling smoke. Nothing. Who is like that God, really? The name showed up. Who is like God? Not the God, the, the pagan gods of, of Nebuchadnezzar. Hazariah, Shadrach, Hazariah, Jehovah is gracious. Really, didn't God have my son? Did, wasn't God gracious to these people in the fire? When they obeyed, God was gracious to them. Azariah, Jehovah has helped. Did God help them in the fire? God. The name that God gave you. The Bible says, my people who are called by, by, by my name. God gave you a name. God gave you a name. The name that God will give you, God gave you, will show up in times of trouble. Will show up. God will show himself strong in that situation. As long as we obey and say no and we purpose to obey God. And they were elevated. They were promoted. And Nebuchadnezzar said, ah, what kind of God is this? And he, he passed a decree. No other God should be worshipped apart from the God of these boys. Daniel. Daniel was given a name by Nebuchadnezzar, Belshazzar. This was a pagan God of Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel means God is my judge. When he was stopped from praying, and they connived, they said, they passed a decree that whoever shall be found praying in another name, apart from the name of the king, shall be thrown in the pit of lions. Daniel purposed to obey. And the Bible says, he went up his house, Open the windows of his house, first in Jerusalem, and he prayed three times a day. And he was caught, thrown in the pit of lions. Jehovah, God is my judge, showed up. God saved him in the lion. In the pit of the God saved him. God did not take away the lion, he didn't chase away the lions. With the lions, God saved him there, right there. God might not take away that problem immediately. But as long as you obey, God will save you in that problem. The Bible says, I'll be with you in fire, in water. He will not take away the fire. He will not take away the water. You will go through the fire. You will go through the water. And you emerge a successful, victorious person in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's launch deeper in obedience to God's word. We are going to see God 2019 in Jesus' name. May God bless you. Amen. Obedience is better than sacrifice. If we will obey the Lord, even as Deuteronomy 28 tells us, if we will carefully obey all these laws and all these blessings will follow us. God's goodness, God's boldness will be with us. Shall we stand up, beloved? Father, we want to thank you for your word reminding us of the essence of obeying your word. You have told us that if we are willing and obedient, 
we will eat the good of the land. You have told us, even as Samuel was speaking to Saul, that obedience is better than sacrifice. We pray, Father, that we will be willing to obey your commandments. Even through the theme that you gave us this year, Simon obeyed your command and he was overwhelmed by the results. Lord, you are going to overwhelm us with what you can do if we will obey your word. Thank you for loving us that much. We want to thank you for your servant that you have used today to deliver your word. Your word is always watched over by your mighty hand. It will never come to us in vain. There is a reason why you are telling us to obey you. Because you want to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond what we ask or think. So we commit our lives in your hands. That this will be revealed to us. To only obey you. We may not understand it. We may not know what is going to happen. We may not know how you are going to do it. But if only we will obey. Lord, you will go before us to fight our battles. To open doors that no man can shut. Lord, to elevate us. To make us heads and not tails. To heal us. And to enlarge our territories. So we thank you and we bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And amen. Well, Pastor Wilson will be leaving tomorrow to go back to Uganda. So we want to be a blessing to him. Amen. And if you can do that, let's do that very, very quickly. Amen. If somebody will bring me a basket right here. If you have a, a love offering towards the servant of the Lord, please bring it. And as we do that,